Hey guys, Tatiana Ward, AKA Beat Face Honey. Thanks for joining me. Trends will come and go, but you need to learn the basics. Don't trouble yourself with a cut crease. Don't trouble yourself with learning how to draw a family portrait on somebody's eye. Don't trouble yourself with the things that really won't make you any money. Unless you work for Cirque du Soleil or a super, super cool job that um, requires those things. If you're doing beauty makeup though, focus on the simple stuff. The simple stuff is what makes you money. So I can go to this look over and over no matter who I'm doing, switch up the colors a little bit, and I've got a girl who feels pretty, who feels a little dramatic, and still feels like she looks like herself without doing the most. So simple. This eye look should take you two seconds. The colors can be interchangeable. There's so much that you can do if you just learn the basics of this look. Instead of making the whole eye dark, I can make some of it light and then put darkness on the tail end. I could make the entire eyelid bright, a light color, and just put a wing. The concept is the same, and you can build off of it however you want to. Once you master this look, you master the money, honey. <laughs> so without further ado, stay tuned to learn how I did it. Okay, I'm gonna start by using Old Faithful. This is Max Spiked. I am barely, barely pressing here. And I'm going to define the brow by using a little concealer and running it along the edge. And I'm blending that out using just my finger. Taking a clear gel from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is gonna help spread my brow pencil through the eyebrow. And also it's kind of like brow hair gel that will keep it in place. I'm gonna take Black Round from MAC and I'm gonna keep Sigma's E25 handy. Okay, I'm spreading that with my brush across the lid and I say that you wanna keep that Sigma brush handy because this product dries really, really quickly. So you gotta have a brush there readily available to spread it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just spreading the product into and above my crease and I'm gonna go back with a little bit more just to make sure that my lid is as dark as I want it to be. And instead of using my brush, I'm gonna pat with my finger right there on the lid and make sure that it's blended the way I need it to be. Patting will keep the color more strong. Rubbing will spread the color out and make it thinner. Makeup Forever are my favorite transitional colors. What's crappy though is that they don't, when you buy them in pan form, meaning without the container, when you're putting them just in a palette, they don't always have numbers on the back. But just go to Makeup Forever and get matte browns as your transitional colors. And the concept is always going to be the same. On somebody who is lighter complected, I'm going to use two lighter colors. On someone darker complected, this might be the first color that I put down and I might go into a more rich brown as I move closer to the crease. Using that same E25 from Sigma, I'm taking that more reddish brown and moving it closer to the crease. And remember, you could be doing this combination with lighter colors, but the concept is still the same. You're starting out with a lighter color as your first color. As you move closer to the crease, you're getting darker. Your brush can also get smaller. This is my third color, also from Makeup Forever. A super, super dark brown. These three colors, putting that right in my crease. This is one of my favorite brushes, and it is from MAC. It's a 221. I can look up and see that these two colors aren't merging the way that I want them to without underestimating what's already on my brush, meaning I'm not gonna go dip in again to my second color. I'm just gonna use what's already on the brush and just blend them together even more so. Cordura from NARS. I'm gonna take the darker of the two. I'm putting that across my lid. If I were working on a client, I might raise her lid right here so that I can really access that crease and make sure that I'm placing product into the crease. If you've primed somebody's eyelid and you still see a crease, more than likely it's because you never put eyeshadow there to begin with. Sometimes you gotta lift and separate. And now I'm just tweaking. I'm gonna go into another NARS color that broke, but it's this gold right here. This is one of those eyeshadow palettes that I say you just have to have. I'm patting that on. I love that shimmer. And the reason that I say that you have to have this is because those two colors in that palette really cover the gamut of women of color, even some Caucasian women. I will literally only highlight 
with those two eyeshadows. I like products that just alleviate anything else, and that's one of them. It's called Alhambra. I dampened my brush just to give it a little more shine. I'm gonna dip back into my first color and just pull it upwards, making sure that the two colors are overlapping. My first transitional color. The highlight only goes right at the arch and out to the tail. I'm gonna take my white and clean up Fallout. Studio Finish Concealer from MAC, my absolute favorite. Dragging that along the edge there. This is one of those steps where I don't use it sparingly. I find a lot of times in both my hands-on classes and students who come to learn from me one-on-one, -on -one, I stress so much that you have to be light-handed that this part in particular, they go too light. It really is a balancing act, knowing when to apply pressure and when not to. And I'm gonna press that in with a beauty blender. Don't underestimate your fingers are one of your best tools. And I learned that before I even started doing makeup. And when I began to try to learn makeup, my favorite person that I would look up to is Pat McGrath, legendary artist. And I read that she used her fingers and that was like life changing for me. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I use my fingers too. And an absolute favorite, I love um, NYC, a drugstore brand. I love their eyeliner. It is their waterproof eyeliner pencil. Okay, so I put that under my lash line and I'm also going to line my waterline. I'm gonna take our second transitional color. This was that Makeup Forever reddish brown next to my black. See how it's intensifying? Being careful not to go too far into that black. And honestly, I don't even know why I did it that way. I should have put the brown down first, really. Gonna take that same pencil and run it right along my upper lash line, using it for eyeliner. Not being too, too careful because it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna spread it out. My favorite black is Urban Decay's Black Round. And I'm just gonna run it over top of what we've already put down with that black eyeliner. Smudging it out, don't want a harsh line, that's why I'm doing it this way. Only on myself do I use tweezers to put on lashes. On clients, I use my fingers. I find it to be way easier to use my fingers and just have the client close her eye and just pop it right on. Throwing some mascara on. Yes, I always put mascara on a fake lash. It blends in my real lash into the fake lash. Um, but a tip is that most of the product is right there literally in the tip. So I run it along their lash line like this. And I dampen my brush just to put a little spot of light into that inner tear duct, that's always cute. I'm using that eyeshadow that I said you have to have. I don't very often tell you that you have to get something because everything is always interchangeable. You know, you start with what you got and then you work your way up. No sense in spending a ton of money on makeup if you're going to waste it just trying to learn how to use it. This right here, you gotta get. That Alhambra from NARS that I told you guys about. This is the lighter color of the two. Color powders are so important. That's something that you're never gonna stop collecting. So what color powder I use on myself, I've been using this for a long time to, to contour myself. It's Lancome, it's so old. 550 Suede C. I am loving Urban Decay right now, I'm telling you. I will put a lip liner all over somebody's lip so fast. Uh-huh. I like it. This is what happened when I think about you. I get in my feelings. And that was Naked 24-7 Lip Pencil from Urban Decay. By putting that down as a base, I have something that's gonna stay matte underneath because you know a pencil's always gonna be matte. They also have a lipstick for that. And I wanna take Conspiracy and just line my lip. Mm-hmm. This is also Urban Decay. You see, I did not put on blush. You see, I did not put on a highlight. I really hate it when people are too shiny. Can we stop wetting our brush before we highlight? You can tell you're just wearing too much makeup. If that's what you're going for, respect. But I don't think you're going for that. Okay guys, so that's that. I really hope you enjoyed it. This look is just never gonna go out of style. It's never gonna get old. When the trends of the times fade away, this is what you can always bank on to make you money. So watch this over and over again and get it down pat because if you can get this down, every other look will be a breeze. And my whole point in saying that is makeup should be easy. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you right back here very soon.